Hello and welcome. My name is Dave Randall, and we're going to talk today about Microsoft Graph and the Intune APIs. Let's first get started by talking about Microsoft Graph in general, and then we'll dive into the Intune APIs and show you exactly how they work in Graph. Microsoft Graph is our unified REST API, and it's a comprehensive developer experience that you can use for integrating data and intelligence exposed by Microsoft services. Let's take a look at specifically what you can do with Graph. Microsoft Graph allows you to access user group and organizational data. As you're building your applications, you'll take one endpoint, one authentication token for any of the users that are accessing data stored in Microsoft Graph. For example, if an organization has SharePoint, Outlook, OneNote, Planner, Teams, or Intune, all of that data can be accessed by using a single graph.microsoft.com endpoint. In order to use that endpoint, you're going to call an API. The base URL for the Graph API is simply https colon slash slash graph.microsoft.com. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to add a version to the end of that URL. And the versions are either going to be v1.0 or beta. Beta indicates that the API is in preview. After that, you're going to append a resource. A resource is the specific bit of information that you're querying Graph for. For example, it could be users, or sites, or drives, or Intune managed devices. After that resource, optionally, you can specify a specific member from the collection of resources. You can also get a specific property of that member. And because of the way that Graph has data about all of the different services and they're linked together, you can use a navigation property to traverse to related resources. Lastly, in order to make your query much more useful, you can add a variety of different query parameters, such as a select query, or you can order by a specific field, or you can filter on a specific property. For example, in this query, I'm using filter equals user principal name equals david at thundercreek.onmicrosoft.com. Now, if I were to run this query, it would simply return to me the one user whose principal name was david at thundercreek.onmicrosoft.com. All of Graph APIs are OData compliant, so if you spend a little bit of time and research OData, you'll find all of the different ways that you can leverage Graph APIs and query information in Intune and other Graph hosted services. When you're calling Graph, you're going to use one of five different standard HTTP methods, get, post, put, patch, and delete. Get will allow you to retrieve the information, post, put, and patch, will add or change the data, and of course, delete will delete an individual resource that you specify. JSON is the format of all of the data exchange using Graph, so you'll retrieve information in JSON format, or you'll format that data and send it over to Graph APIs in JSON format as well. A few things that you need to know when you're building your applications with Graph. An Azure Active Directory global administrator for the company must consent your app in their tenant. You have to define specific permission scopes for your application, and those go along with the consent that a global administrator performs. Graph API will return a lot of information, and so Graph API supports and oftentimes requires paging. In the case of Intune, we'll typically return 1,000 objects per page. Graph also supports a new feature called batching, this allows you to specify several commands all in one single entry. It's usually faster you to use batching. Lastly, I want you to watch the change log. This indicates all of the new and updated APIs in Graph. Now, I know you want to get to build applications for Intune and a couple of things that you need to know. First off, all of our Intune APIs require delegated permissions. So you're going to be logging in with an app and a user token. All of our APIs support Intune role-based access control. That means you have specific permissions that need to be granted for the functions that you're performing in your app. All our Intune APIs will also support auditing. So if your application changes things in Intune, those change events will be audited. 
And as of January this year, many of our APIs are now generally available or in V1.0. Some of them are also still in beta, so you'll need to make sure that you check both V1.0 and beta code trees. Let's spend a little bit of time in Graph Explorer and see exactly how this works. First off, I'm in the Azure portal, and I'm looking at the overview for Intune. I'll select Graph Explorer, and you'll notice I'm authenticated and logged in as the same user as I was in Azure Portal. Now, to help me along, I've got a couple of scripts that I've saved off in Notepad. So let's go take a look at the very first one. I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste it into Graph Explorer, which I think is just a fantastic tool for being able to easily understand all of the things you can do with Graph. When I click Run Query, and the query executes, it's going to tell me some basic information about the different devices that I have enrolled. In this case, you can see I've got five Android devices, two iOS devices, some Windows Mobile, and Windows. Now, the reason why we started out in the Azure portal is because, in fact, if we look at the list of devices, I have 11 compliant devices. This matches what we saw in Graph Explorer. Total number of devices is 11 devices. Let's, let's go ahead and run the device overview. And you notice in the list of data that was returned by Graph, we have Android, iOS, Mac, and Windows devices. Five Android, one, two iOS, and so forth. Now, if we go over to the Azure portal and we look at the overview of the devices, you'll see that this donut chart matches exactly the same numbers. And the reason why is because the Azure portal is using that exact same graph API call to return the information to display in the chart. So that is to say, everything that you can do in the Azure portal for Intune is called via graph, and you can call it separately yourself. So let's take a look at a couple of other things that you can do with graph. If I want to look at individual managed devices, or those are the devices that have been enrolled in Intune, Let's take a look at that query. When I run it, you'll notice from my scroll bar that I've got a lot of data. This is all of the detailed information for every one of the devices that have been enrolled in Intune. Let's take a look. Here's one specifically, David Windows Phone, that was enrolled on 417 of 28. It's marked as compliant. We don't know whether it's been jailbroken. We can see a bunch of other properties, both hardware information as well as device information for this particular device. And in fact, if we went over to the Azure portal and we looked at a list of all devices, we'd find exactly that same one in Azure portal. So if we come over and look at the list of all devices in Intune, we'll see exactly the same list of devices that we had in Azure, over in Graph Explorer and here's the David Windows Phone 41728. So here's the specific record of information that we saw over in Graph Explorer. So to continue on with some of the other things we can do with Graph Explorer, the next thing that I want to take a look at is a specific device and just the device name and the user who logged in or enrolled that device. So here I've been I've given a select query, and we'll see the device name as well as the user who enrolled that particular device. So a good example of how you can limit the list of data that you get back from Graph rather than seeing lots and lots of properties of information. The next thing we'll take a look at is device categories. And oftentimes, you need to build some lists in your code that tie various pieces of Intune together. So if we go take a look at our device categories, we'll see we have one called Eastern Region, one called Western Region, Southern. And if we go back to the Azure portal and we go to our device enrollment, look at device categories, you'll see exactly the same list, Western Region, Eastern, Southern, Boston, and so forth. Easy to tie together the data from a variety of different locations in the Azure portal by using Graph Explorer or Graph Queries. Now, many of you are managing applications with Intune, 
And so let's take a look at the mobile apps. And actually, I'm just going to grab this one, which is uh, a filter on only to show the specific application name or the display name. So here's a list of the applications that I've got PowerPoint, Excel, Canvas Paint, Zillow, Home Remote, and so forth. Again, really easy to get all of the data for all the applications that are in Intune. I mentioned the fact that any of the change events that you did in Intune are audited. So let's take a look at what audit events look like. A lot of times our customers are interested in pushing audit events over to a security event and incident monitoring system. Here's a list of all of the different activities that were performed in Intune, who did them, and what the specific result was for those change events. So auditing, great way for you to extend the capabilities of Intune changes into a reporting solution. So we've done a lot of gets, and the next thing that I'd love to show you is how we can actually make some changes in Intune. So the first thing that I'm going to do is we're going to, uh, we'll stay here in device management, but I'm going to go take a look at role definitions. Now role definitions are where our role-based access control is defined, and we have a role here called the policy and profile manager, and there's several more that are down here. Let's take a look at what they look like in the console. If I go to Intune roles, look at a list of all my roles, here's that policy and profile manager. You notice we have several built-in roles and a couple of custom roles. So we'll leave this right where it is. And now I'm going to go over and on the same role definition endpoint, I'm going to put that text into my request body. So by changing from get to post, we'll tell Graph Explorer, go create for me a new role definition using the data that's in the request body. We'll go run that. And because I got a status code 200, that succeeded. Here's the result that was generated by the back end. And it matches the permissions that I had listed in my request body. Let's go back to the portal, click Refresh. And we now see that we have our Graph Explorer role that we just created. So it was very easy for us to create a new object in Intune by just using a post against the same endpoint that we used for the get. And in fact, now if we do a get on our role definitions, scroll to the bottom of the list, we should see our, here is our role created in Graph Explorer, and here's the permissions that were generated for it. Now, the last thing that I can do, because I have the ID of this particular role, and oftentimes you're going to need to reference your Intune objects by ID, if I add a slash and the ID and run a query, you'll see now that I only get back the one role. So the last action that we're going to perform is a delete and clean up the work that we just did. When I run the query, again, a status code 200 indicates success, we'll go back and refresh our list, and you'll see that our Graph Explorer role is now gone. So that's a quick tour of many of the different things that you can do in Graph Explorer with Intune APIs. Now that we've covered Graph Explorer, here are some of the other resource APIs that you're going to want to take a look at. In the first column on the left are our application-related APIs. For mobile applications or managed applications, those are going to be the core ones that you're querying. Now, I know a lot of customers use app protection policies, so the manage that policy is where you'll find those policies. A lot of Int Intune information also has status, like the manage that status, which indicates how those application deployments are succeeding, whether or not they're pending, or whether or not they've failed. In addition, things like Windows Information Protection Policy, VPP tokens, and managed eBooks are all part of the device app management area. On the right-hand side are our device-related APIs, such as managed devices, which we took a look at. Terms and conditions or enrollment profiles 
are used as em new employees enroll with Intune, or device enrollment configurations. Device configuration device state summaries indicate whether or not your device is enrolled and compliant, or you can create new configuration policies using the device configurations endpoint. And lastly, we took a little bit, uh, we took a look at the role definitions to see how Intune RBAC roles can be viewed and created. I hope you've seen how easy it is to use Intune and Microsoft Graph. There's a couple of things that I'd like you to do now. First, I want you to go to the Intune resources page at the highlighted link below and spend a little bit of time. Make sure that you understand all of how to program Graph with Intune. Second, if you're using PowerShell, we have a great set of PowerShell commandlets that are available on a GitHub repository. Take some time, look through all of those. They've got great examples of how to leverage Intune APIs in Microsoft Graph. Lastly, go code, have some fun, and make Intune the center of your showpiece. Thanks.